in Vegas. Yeah. Who's gonna leave it all there on the set tonight? Yeah. Who's gonna have a lot of fun doing it? Yeah. We'll probably use the Philippines on three, one, two, three. All right. Tonight, live at the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Dylan Jorgensen, Bonnie Gore, Jason Outlaw, music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, founder of the Youth Cancer Baseball Tour, Greg yeah. Durfee. From CubitMidtown.com, Eric Madison. Yeah. Musical performance by Chop 808. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who just got a micro loan from Donald Trump's father, Mr. Jason Outlaw. What's up, what's up? All right. Give it up for DJ Lenny Alfonso, huh? Let's hear it for it. Yes. Yes, a micro loan from okay. Donald Trump's father. million bucks, that's a micro loan. You that's know? a micro yeah. loan? A million bucks. That's what he got when he first started. That's pretty yeah. awesome. That's pretty, I, I wish I had a micro loan for a million bucks. Anyone else wish they had a micro loan for a million bucks? I'm just saying, just throwing it out there, yeah. <laughs> All right. And here is what's in the news. McDonald's, the largest chain of fast food restaurants in the world, has announced that the minimum wage increase from $8.75 to $15 an hour has caused it to schedule the close of 17,000 restaurants in the United States. But it opens many arteries. It does. It does. <laughs> but with, uh, with already decreasing profits, McDonald's says, this is the straw that broke the camel's back. But they're optimistic, because now they can use that camel as meat in their burgers. <laughs> they can. They'll use anything. Anything. You name it, they'll use it. They'll use it. Um, ben Carson, who has uh, been breaking all kinds of boundaries, has uh, his Republican campaign, is reaching out to younger African American communities. Uh, he has just released a hip hop ad. No. That's right. Yeah. Ben Carson may be the first black re Republican presidential candidate. However, he will forever be known as the whitest black man ever. Oh. Did you see him? Did you, you hear this ad? It, oh my gosh. Like, I think I could have done better. And I'm like. Because freedom is not free and we must fight for it every day. Every one of us must fight for it because we're fighting for our children and the next generation. If we want to get America back on track, we got to vote Ben Carson. No matter of fact, go out and vote. I'm Ben Carson, and I approve this message. <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm like this white. I'm like, white? I'm white? That's, that's, that's me. I'm like super white. And I was like, that's very extremely he's white. He's not exactly a ball of energy. Yet. Yeah, yeah, he completely, wow, man. And he's got no rhythm at all. None, none, none. Uh, a new study shows that going down on women is good for your health. Yes, indeed. But ladies, going down on a man is good for your jewelry collection. Oh. That's true. That's true. <laughs> However, a man going down on a man is good for some, while women going down on women is good for everyone. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you going down on yourself, well, that just gives you no reason to leave the house. <laughs> it's true. If I could, I would never leave the house. I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't be married. I don't know. Uh, Trekkies around the world woke up to amazing news this morning. That's right. No, they have not had sex still. Um, however, they woke up to uh, Alex Kutzman, a, a well-known player in the Star Trek feature films, has announced that he will be executive producing an all-new Star Trek series to be released January 2017 on CBS. Isn't that exciting? However, they said there's no better time to give Star Trek fans a new series on the heels of its original show's 50th anniversary celebration. So that means for 50 years, people have been in fear of Klingons on Uranus. <laughs> yes. I went with the easy planet joke on that one, my bad. I couldn't help. I've always wanted to throw that in. Klingons on your hand. Okay. Um, a study of 657 people taking a, pop, a new drug called PREP, that's right, it's a drug that pre prevents, it's a daily pill that prevents HIV, uh, has found that on a, on a uh, single, not a single person in the study contracted AIDS. 
at all throughout two and a half years. That's right. So, uh, the, the so that's actually what Lamar Odom was doing when he was at the whorehouse. That's right. He was like, I'm trying out this pill. Sorry. The research showed that despite a rising rate in sexually transmitted infections, the group um, in the group as well as the decline in condom use, the pill was able to protect everyone from HIV. The study was conducted by doctors based in Oakland, California. Because Oakland, California is where you look for medical innovations. <laughs> Have you been to Oakland? I was there the other day. It was crazy. I was like, there's no medical. Yeah, yeah it just doesn't look like, you know, you, you think it would be more gunshot wounds. Pick it on Oakland. All right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, Brandy Irwin. Everyone knows who Brandy Irwin is? She's on Dance with the Stars. Uh, she's the daughter of the famous crocodile hunter, Steve Irwin, who died filming a show 12 years ago. Uh, has had a judge deny her Dancing with the Stars contract because the minor did not have proof of her father's death. That's right. It's unclear if the judge didn't know about the highly publicized death or if she's voting for someone else on Dancing with the Stars. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. Really? Really? No, nothing on that? Have you guys drank? Who's been drinking? No, four. That's, that's why. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Drink more. It's better as you go, guys. It's all right. Pornhub has launched a crowdfunding campaign. Oh, all right. All right. Cleavage McGee over there. She's in on Pornhub. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Pornhub has launched a crowdfunding campaign to film a porn in outer space. That's right. This gives new meaning to the term astronaut. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It does. It's, uh, astronaut. Good. All right. I, I didn't. Did I need to make that? I didn't. I did not. All right. We can bleep that out later. All right. Um, there's. A, there's actually a story I wanted to ask you about, Lenny. There's okay. a DJ who murdered his ex-wife after she applied for half of his vinyl collection in a divorce. Oh. It, it, now, now it, are you? Have you ever been married, Lenny? Uh, no, I haven't. You've never been married. Never. But if if someone actually filed a lawsuit for half, of you would you kill him? <laughs> Not as long as I can get vis visitation rights, you know. Your visitation rights. Yeah. All right, that's that's, that's good. Know. That's good. Yeah, I would I would think you should just you but, know you uh, would because DJs they're serious about their vinyl, right? <laughs> yeah, you know it's real. It's the real deal. They're they're like your children. You know, you carry them. You have them for years. I've had you know vinyl for 30 years. You know. Wow. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, so so they're like your your like your kids. You carry them in crates. <laughs> yeah. And you move them from place yeah. to place. That's well, good. What I, what I would like to give a shout out to uh, you all. Uh, we have a special day here today. It's uh, this gentleman, Mr. Jason Outlaw's birthday. Let's oh, give him a round of applause. Is, it is my birthday. I'll share some vinyl with you on your birthday. You're gonna share, we're going to share some vinyl and nestle by the fire. That's good. Yeah, that's all right. That's good. Well, well thank you, Lenny. Yeah. I appreciate the happy birthday, guys. I'm just getting a lot older. All right, cool. <laughs> Blondies. Yeah, Blondies from her. Um, NASA has discovered a giant galaxy 8.5 billion light years away. NASA has also discovered it can say anything and we will believe it. We have no proof, do we? We have none. None. Yes. All right, so this is our final little thing. Uh, there's a recent article published that's saying for the first time ever something has come out of a black hole. That's right, something's come out of a black hole. So um, we have a few ideas of what may have come out of that black hole. So here they are. <clears throat> uh, Lamar Odom sobriety. That's one. Jimmy Hoffa. Oh, that's where he was. And uh, what else? Oh, every man's penis if you're a side chick. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Uh, Bruce Jenner's sexuality. Uh, that voice in Donald Trump's head that says, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Lohan's acting career. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, according to his movie, Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> that's right. Hey, give it up for DJ Lenny Alfonso! going to love, love, love our next guest. So uh, got a degree in archaeology and is concerned about the mountains of plastic that are mounting up in our oceans. So please put your hands together for Jessica Searles. Come on Thank out you. and tell us about these oceans. What's up, Las Vegas? Yeah, all this Hi. ocean plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You're going to hug heart to heart. This well, is how you we can't have microphones on. Oh, OK. Oh, true. Yeah, well, that's yeah. a strong hug, yeah. Yeah, I'm a strong person. <laughs> I can tell, yeah. All yes. right. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, 
You're you're kind of an archaeologist, right? I mean, you've got a degree in archaeology. Yes. Do you do it for a living? Do you call yourself an archaeologist? Well, actually, it was a funny thing. I was living in Egypt. I wanted to be an Egyptologist, and I'm Christian, and they were persecuting Christians in Egypt at the time. So I wound up transferring back, and I got scouted as a runway model. Then I did a lot of modeling in LA, and so I've kind of just made my way in my life as a model, yeah. and I have calendars out it's now. My, it's my story, too. Yes. It's just stupid life. <laughs> it just happened. I, I was honestly planning on digging in the dirt, and I, that didn't work out. So I'm here now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just can imagine that Jurassic Park moment when you find the amber. One so. day, I, I do yeah. want to go back to archaeology. I still want to get my doctorate. It's my goal. So. Okay, great. Okay, but on the way there, you've been an entrepreneur in a number of ways. Yes. Um, and this this ocean problem. Talk, right. talk to me about what's going on in the ocean. Okay. And the gy gyre? It's a gyre. A gyre. Okay. Yeah. So this is the swirling. There's five gyres that are actually in the ocean, which accumulate to over the size of Europe. So um, the greatest gyre is the Great Northern Gyre. It's located in the North Pacific Ocean. Yeah. And it's estimated to be two times the size of Texas. Um, we don't know exactly how much trash is. There's just estimates, because it's in our deep sea, and it's actually frozen in Antarctic. Okay, and it's not just, like, if I was to look at it, is it just garbage, is it just water bottles as far as no, I can see? And it's stuff not like that? just. What do, you, what do you see, what does it look like? There's debris, I mean, you can, there's like boats of pictures of boats that you are just like swimming through. It creates its own tide, it's its own channel, it's insane. And all of our animals, our marine life, like, they eat this. Yeah. Zooplankton is the, what feeds all the marine life and that's just being destroyed. It's in their bodies and when a marine animal eats this, we essentially eat marine animals. All of us eat fish, right? Everyone likes sushi. So then we're essentially all eating plastic and all these chemical debris that are being washed into our water systems um, via even a car wash. So one of my entrepreneur's skills is I, I am a partner in a company called Training Glow, and it's a completely waterless car wash system that's 100% organic. It's completely biodegradable. Wait, no water? So, no water. So you just like blow air on the car and call it clean? Yeah, we have it. It's, it's like they're pressurized. And we have a solution. It was patented in 1991 in Trinidad. And we've been in business since 1991. So we have three up and running training glows in Los Angeles. And I have three mobile detail vans. And I'm just signing a contract now to have our first training glow. It's a three system three-step system, and it requires a human to use. So I want to bring back jobs to America. Can it replace showers? Like, can I just... Trig okay, actually, you should think about... A giant fan what you have to think about is um, what's being plant. sifted into our water and our sewage system. So yeah. plastic and trash, that is actually coming through your shower onto your body, and your skin is your largest organ that you have. So everything that touches your skin, what you put uh. on your skin, is essentially going inside of your system. And it's creating an autoimmune disease like diabetes or there are others, you know, that we've seen happen over the last 100 years or the last 50 years. And you're like, why do so many people have Alzheimer's? Why do we have all these diseases that are just okay. manifesting? So you're saying even in the long run, just shower water could be... Uh, yes. Could be containing... It's already these, affected these... by it. It's not uh, could be. It's already happened. See, because like, like, you know, you eat meat and they're like, oh, it's full of hormones. And you're like, I'll take a salad. Yeah. And they're like, oh, pesticides, all stuff. And then I'd, you're like... Yeah. Like, well, I can't shower? I gotta blow, dry well, my shower? Well, as a society, we need to change. We yeah. have to wake up, and I think that we have a lot of young entrepreneurs in our world that are excited about changing our cultures and our systems. Yeah, I think so too, You yeah. know? Um, so, unfortunately, these giant companies are keeping our media contained from knowing what's really going on. What yeah, nobody holds really us eating. back, though. Yeah, no. I have no one to, yeah. I just say it like it is, no yeah. filter. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, they want to they wanna control okay. us. They want to keep us capitalized because if they had to change their systems, they would essentially be going out of business, and then there's no money. And that's really what's keeping these people from telling yeah. you that you're, you're becoming sick. We're all becoming sick. You yeah. know, we're all dying faster. It's just, it's amazing that our society wants to do that. Right, well, it's, it's the bottom line for dollars sometimes. But uh, we're almost kind of running low on time. So why don't you talk to me a little bit about uh, this calendar that you're doing I do, to sort yeah. Of support it? Yeah, I work for Cover Models. I have four calendars that are right now. And I just got word that I'm working on two more. So they're 16-month calendars. And um, I'm signing with a distributor on Saturday, which is really exciting. So nice. stay tuned for that. You can keep, um, I'll keep you updated if you go on my Facebook or on my website. And I'm Jessica Searles. It's spelled like curls, but with an S, just to keep it really simple for everybody. And um, I'll keep you updated. So they're fun. Okay. I like to do so it. So as a, as a final call to action, if 
people don't want to shower and stuff that gives them all this time. It's like, what What do you think people should do? Like, what do no, you, no, no, like, okay. what's, what's a good, you guys, there is solutions. The solution. I don't want to just like create a problem. That's like not my goal. My goal, um, I'm actually creating a process and creating a show right now that's going to explain how as a society, as a culture, that we can make these changes nice. that aren't so dramatic. It's not so scary. It's just very small things that we need to do to revolutionize our culture. Essentially, humans need to evolve. We can't just sit and just stay stagnant. I mean, no one in culture wants to do that. Why don't we all want to become better as a people and heal our world? Um, we, there are ships that have been created that suck up the trash that's in the ocean. The trash can be reconverted into oil, and so we essentially have to stop taking oil from other countries. We can bring back jobs to America and essentially bring back this powerhouse nation that we've kind of lost within this war. So just go clean up all this plastic. We gotta clean the trash. Okay. Um, the thing is, it's just it's gonna take a long time, but you have to also think about global warming and what the trash is doing to our climate and our ecosystem. This is also affecting global warming. What will happen within the next 30 years is we're gonna see huge amounts of storms, huge amount of flooding, and there are gonna be over five million people that are displaced with their homes. Bye bye Florida by 2080. Well, you can't if say we don't, 2080. To, you can't say goodbye to Florida. No, Florida is four feet like, below sea level. They're all gone. By 2080, it's projected that its sea levels will rise over eight inches, you know? That's a huge deal. Yeah, eight inches is a huge it's deal. It's a huge deal, because it's already risen over eight inches. And when that yeah. happens, we're gonna see so much of Florida actually start thinking. Yeah. You know, not just Florida alone, but California and other areas. Come on board with me. I wanna save the world, everybody takes it. It's a team, there's no iron team. Um, just email me at jms, period, s-u-r-l-s, at gmail.com, and we can join forces, and you can help become a part of a new World. Captain Planet. Okay, Woo! yeah, we Let's got do it. it. All right, thank you so much for thank coming you, up. I appreciate you. talking about yes. it. So, yeah. Thanks. hitting it out of the park. He has established an affordable method and system to enable children with cancer to go to Major League Baseball Not games. Any good anymore. Now welcome the founder of the Youth good. Cancer Baseball Tour, Greg Durfee. Come on up, Greg. Hi, welcome. Hi, everybody. Have a seat. Join us. Now this is really interesting what you're doing with um, kids with cancer. First of all, let's talk about why is this a passion of yours and what got you into helping kids with cancer go to baseball games? Well, in 2000, I had a pastor friend who gave me a call. He said that his uh, nephew was in uh, LA Children's Hospital. We took Nicholas to an angel game after I met him. And a couple months after that, he had passed away. Oh. So it so devastated my life. I ended up homeless in Skid Row, LA for about a year and a half. Oh, wow. And it was through that healing process that I got my faith back and I just wanted to dedicate the rest of my life in helping these kids and their families. And uh, baseball, take them to a baseball game. You know, we all like going to a game. We, we remember the first right. time we went. Yeah, so right? why baseball instead of another sport? Which I love baseball and you talk about LA, I'm a huge Dodgers fan. Angel fan. Yeah. yeah. Oh, watch out. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, you know, it's America's pastime. Is that why one of the reasons you chose it? It's a fun game to watch. It's a family oriented. That's why how I grew up. How why did you choose baseball? Well, that was one of the reasons. But I grew up playing baseball myself all the way through high school and played single A. So it was just a good fit. And it, and you know Nicholas was an Angel fan. So it it just when I got out of the Union Rescue Men program when I left downtown, uh, it just really just fit real well with my background and then also having taken him. Right, and how do you transition? How do you transition from Skid Row to, okay, I'm gonna help people. What, what was the first steps and how did you find other kids that were interested in going to MLB games when they have terminal illnesses? Well, a, a lot of it, um, starting the process, um, I met a friend um, in Hollywood when I was working. And um, one of the things he asked me, he said, you know, Greg, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? And I said, I want to take kids with cancer to major league ballparks. So he helped me get to get it started. The kids we, we, we pick from or we get from are usually from the local children's hospitals, okay. like either in LA or, or Orange County where we've gone, and, um, or independent or smaller nonprofits that are in the cities. What we like to do is we take care of everything. We take care of the parking, the food, the souvenirs. 99.9% um, .9 of the teams don't 
donate the tickets. Um, if they don't, then we, we purchase the tickets. But we don't want them to worry about anything. We don't want the families to worry about, you know, where how they're going to spend the money or because you right. know they're, they're yeah, it's one thing to get them in the door but it's 10 bucks for a hot dog right and, exactly right and you know with the medical bills and everything else that they have to pay we just don't want them to worry about that we just want them to create a fat that family moment you know at a ballpark where it sometimes it's the kids first and only time that they go you know and, and to be there with their families that's great now is this a national thing is this in uh several cities throughout the u.s or is it still confined to um the Los Angeles and Orange County area right now? We started in 2010, and we've gone from 2010 to now, we've gone to anywhere from two a year to seven a year. It just wow. basically depends on how much money I can raise. Okay. Um, but the exciting thing is, our dream is to go to all 30 one year and then end at the All-Star Game. Well, we've had meetings here in Vegas with a very high profile business that's pretty philanthropic, and it looks like we might be able to achieve that next year. Wow, and how do you guys plan on achieving that with uh, doing something here locally in Las Vegas? We're hoping to do a celebrity softball or wiffle ball tournament oh. in March. We're not real sure. We're working with the city on availability of fields and stuff, but you guys will have to come bring a team. We will. Yeah, I want to be on it. I want. We could just get a downtown podcast team, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. All of us. Yeah. So we will be the celebrity team, obviously, <laughs> right? Well, we're hoping to have eight or ten teams. You know, there will be a fee, but uh, then the eight or ten teams will compete, and whoever wins out of those will probably end up playing the celebrities. Oh, well, watch out whoever <laughs> plays us. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but, no, we, we actually really do want to get involved, and I think yeah. it would be fun for us. We, at least you gave us a heads up so we can practice, because we're very competitive <laughs> as a team. So, Well, how else can other people help if, you know, if they can't come and participate in March, if they want to help today? What can they do? The best thing to do is probably email me. Uh, my email is Durfee Greg, very easy. My mm -hmm. last name, my, small, my, my first name, at yahoo.com. Or if you go to GoFundMe, we have a GoFundMe page set up from last, from this past year's store. But you just uh, go to their main website and then just in the search engine. Put, put right, and name. just as little as $20 yeah. will get a kid to an MLB game. And how do, you know, do you guys go to children's hospitals and talk to parents and kids and find the kids that want to go? Or do people reach out to you with... There's a child with cancer that's interested in this. How do they reach you? The same way through your email? Yeah, just just email me. We we do do. We're very relational. That's one of the things that sets us apart from some of the others. But we we uh, we do have people that will call us. You okay. know, call me. They'll hear about me either from a news reporter right. or from something like this. But yeah, just uh, my email would be the easiest okay, way. Okay, one more time with your email. Durfee Greg at yahoo.com. All right. Well, thank you for coming on. And, you know, I'm going to get my cleats and glove out. So Are you going to pitch? Are you going to play the outfield? Or? Um, I don't know. Maybe a catcher. I feel, uh, I feel good yeah. with that. You, do you want to get ran over? <laughs> I can handle it. I okay. Think. All right, Bonnie. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again. Chris. All right. Thank you. All right. Now, stay tuned because up next, our musical guest is Chop 808. <laughs> Performer will be debuting a single from his album release November 13th. You can get more information at chop808.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Chop 808. Oh. <laughs> hey guys, what's cracking? Uh, my name is Chop 808. Ah. Uh. So when I say ah, uh, y'all say ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Uh. Hit it. Round it, round it, round it. Hey, this 
Love, be kind to one another.